recently I was thinking about what was the funniest piece of advice that someone has ever given to me. And I remembered right after I graduated high school and I was heading off to college, this older woman that I knew, she came to me and she said, Keisha, just remember, keep your books open and keep your legs closed. And I thought that was hilarious. I remember telling my friends about it and laughing and everything. But the older I get, the more I realize that she was trying to teach me an important lesson about focus. That this was not about sex, this was not about staying pure in college or anything like that. But she knew that I was a woman of purpose. She knew that God had placed a very important purpose and mission in my heart. And she wanted me to stay focused while I was in school and not get distracted by boys or any of the other things that girls can get distracted by in college. And it was a very important lesson for me because, again, as I coach women on dating and relationships, as I deal with my own relationship with my husband and with my career and everything, I realized that focus is the thing that kills our dreams so often. And there are three ways in which it happens. Number one, you are so focused on your past hurt that you can't focus on anything that is ahead of you. The Bible talks so many times about the importance of focusing on what is before us, focusing on our future, focusing on the good things instead of the bad things that happened in our past. You know, Proverbs talks about as a man thinketh, so is he. There's also a verse in chapter four, I believe, that talks about keeping your gaze on the things that are ahead of you. Philippians has that verse in chapter four as well that talks about whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever is lovely. Those are the things that you need to be thinking of. So our focus is always supposed to be forward. Our focus is always supposed to be on the things that are ahead of us. If you really believe that the best is yet to come in your life, if you really believe that you are a cherished woman and that God has so much greatness set ahead of you, why are you constantly focused on your past? I see women meet great men and they start to date these great men, but they can't give the man a real chance because all they can think about in the back of their heads are all the times that men have hurt them in the past, whether that man is an ex-boyfriend, an ex-husband, an ex-baby daddy, or it is a brother, it is a male teacher, a pastor, a father. There's some man in their past that has hurt them, and because they have been so hurt, maybe they've been hurt multiple times, they can't see a future with the person that they're currently with. They can't trust that this guy might be the right guy for them. They can't trust that God has placed a good man into their lives because they've dealt with so much trash in the past. You have to learn how to deal with those past hurts. Until you learn how to heal, until you learn how to forgive, you will constantly be focusing on the things that are behind you instead of the future that is supposed to be set before you. Another thing is words. That is the second way that your lack of focus can kill your future because it's not just the things that are done. I see so many women that I look at them as I'm coaching them, as I meet them at a restaurant, as I have conversations with them on the phone. I can see that this woman is a great woman, that she is a cherished woman, and that she has this vision of such an abundant life in her head. She sees herself, you know, with the great godly husband. She sees herself with the kids. She sees herself with the amazing career. And she has all these ideas about what she wants to do in life, what it is that she wants to accomplish, the impact that she is gonna make, and she can't do any of those things. And you wanna know why she can't do any of those things? Because she's too, focused on something stupid that someone said years ago. You know, when you were a kid, someone called you fat. Someone called your hair nappy. Someone made fun of you because you were tall. 
someone said that you were going to fail at something and because of one comment that someone has said about you you are unable to move forward with your future you are paralyzed at the same place that you were all those years ago i see women who are in their 20s 30s 40s and beyond who deep down inside are still the six-year-old kid who got bullied in school sis that is not the way that you should be going here's the thing i'm gonna be honest with you for a second whoever said what it was that they said about you when you were a child or when you were a teenager or when you were a young adult or if they said it last week they have moved on with their lives they no longer care they probably don't even remember saying it if you were to approach them right now they'd be like i never said that what are you talking about they've moved on so why won't you are you really going to allow yourself to be trapped by the words that one person said when you should be listening to what God says about you. The third way in which a lack of focus will kill your love life and kill every other aspect of your life is that too often I see women getting squirreled. Um, if you don't know what I mean by getting squirreled, I don't know if you've ever seen the cartoon, uh, darn it. Uh, uh, <laughs> It is a Disney movie. Oh, it's up. There's a dog in the movie. Uh, he gets squirreled. Whenever he sees a squirrel, he yells out squirrel. He's completely distracted by everything else that um, is happening in the moment. So instead of allowing yourself to get squirreled, you have to stay focused on the great future that is ahead of you and emphasis on this great future that is ahead of you because this is what I see way too often with women who are single and particularly women who have been single for a while. They know they deserve to be in a cherished relationship. They know they deserve that great godly man, that purpose partner who is not only gonna cherish them and love them because of course that's what we want, but also God has placed that man in their lives to help them fulfill the purpose that they are supposed to live out. So they know this. They keep praying to God and believing for this man. They're like, God, I know that you have great for me, not just good, great. But they say that prayer in a couple of weeks go by, a couple of months go by, a couple of years go by. So instead of holding on to that, instead of realizing that there might be a period of wait because God is still preparing you, because just like, God is preparing that man for you. He's also preparing you for that man. So instead of working on themselves during this wait so that they can be the cherished woman that this man is going to marry, instead of knowing that God is preparing this man to be the right man for them, they start settling. They will go with the first man who is so-so, who's okay. Um, he's nice, I guess, you know, you know, he's cool. Um, he has a job like that's that's good right like he goes to church sometimes um you know we don't have a lot in common but he's he's nice to me i guess you know they'll settle for that guy instead of being willing to hold fast to stick to their boundaries to stick to their standards and wait on the right one and here's what happens they get in all of these relationships with men who are not the right men for them and then they get disappointed because the man turns out to be trash or because they knew this was an okay man maybe even a good man but they knew that this wasn't the man for them yet they get mad when you know you date this guy and you put time into the relationship and he moves on and marries the next woman that he meets because that was the woman that God meant for him and you decided that you wanted to just settle and, and date for now so that you had someone next to you. Or they start getting jaded. They date strings and strings of okay men and they start to think, okay, well maybe I'm not meant to marry this great man who's gonna cherish me. Maybe I'm meant to marry, you know, some guy who's just okay and we'll have a kid or two and you know, we'll live okay lives and that's gonna be it. Focus. Focus on what it is that is set before you. You have to learn to heal the past. 
you have to let go of the things that weigh you down and you have to be willing to concentrate on the great not just the good or the okay